Let me know if you know what this is in the comments below. Hey, how's it going? This is Joe Intel. Today I'm going to be taking a look at a Sonos 5.1 channel sound system. Crazy. Before I get into it, I want to thank all my Patreon supporters. Thank you to all of you who support me out there because you guys let me do videos like these. So thank you guys. If you're not already a Patreon, please consider doing so because it really helps me out. So the idea for this video came out because Sonos and Ikea just partnered up and they came up with a line called the Symphonisk, Symphonisk, I'm not sure how to say it, but they came out with it and I was there on the day that they released it. So I've never owned a Sonos system even though I know they're widely popular. And so I was very curious to see how they performed. You know, the way I figure is all these people who like Sonos, they can't all be wrong. There must be something good about it. And so I wanted to give it a try. And this is what this video is gonna be about. So just the speakers by themselves, they come in two different forms. They have one that's a lamp and I just didn't really like the way that it looked, but they also had another one that was a bookshelf. They come in different colors. I think it's white and black. And so I chose to get a white one because I thought it would blend in with the rest of my stuff here. This is the least expensive way for you to get into the Sonos ecosystem because these start off at 99 bucks each. So you can get two of them, pair them up, and you can have stereo pair for 199 bucks. Now surprisingly, you are able to take off the grill on these and they have a three and a half inch driver and a one inch soft dome tweeter. Now the thing I like about Ikea stuff, it's very simplistic and I have other Ikea furniture and as you can tell here, these kind of match the rest of my furniture. I think that's a good move on Sonos's part because the main thing that people don't like about speakers is they don't like looking at speakers. I know I do, a lot of you guys out there, you guys like the look of speakers, but most people don't and so it's good that these kind of blend into the decor. Each speaker is self-powered and it needs to be that way because these are what they call wireless. They're not really wireless because you still have to plug them into power. But what you don't need is you do not need a cable going from this to a receiver or the Sonos beam, which I did get. And the reason I did get that beam was because I wanted to set this up, not just in stereo, but I wanted to set it up in a surround sound fashion. So the Sonos beam I picked up, and this is a three channel system, I would say. It's a center channel, and left and right. It also has a passive radiator in there, a few other things to make it so that this actually has some pretty decent bass. And I was surprised by that. So just to be clear, if you wanna hook Sonos up to your TV, you're gonna need one of the Sonos sound bars. And so the Sonos Beam is the least expensive one that they have. They have the play bass, they have some other ones also. And so you're gonna need that because you need HDMI and you need a TV that supports ARC. And that's something that I found out. I have a projector, my projector does not support ARC, and so I had to try to figure out a way to get it to work. I ended up doing something where I had a, uh, a Xiaomi Mi Box connected directly to the Sonos Beam via an adapter that they have, which adapts the HDMI to a SPDIF optical, and so I was able to plug that in to the Xiaomi Mi Box, and that went to the Sonos Beam. So this is not ideal. What you really want is you want a TV that supports ARC because you'll be able to control the volume with your existing remote. Nothing else that you have to do. But this was pretty smart. Even though I wasn't able to do that, I was still able to program my remote to work with it. So they've kind of thought of a lot of different things to make this work. And that is the overall impression that I have with the system is that Sonos really does a good job of making it, I wouldn't say necessarily easy, because it, the setup, it does require some setup. The setup did take a little while, but it's not even that. It's a coolness factor. The fact that like, oh yeah, look at me, I'm streaming from my phone and it just makes it very easy. Now, one thing to keep in mind, all the stuff that goes into the Sonos has to come from their app, right? So you're not gonna be able to Bluetooth to this thing. You can airplay to it. You can play something via HDMI if it's on the TV. You can't plug in anything, you can't plug in a 3.5 or an RCA. So it's very controlled as far as what goes into that. They have a wide list of streaming services that do work with it, but just keep that in mind. It is a closed system. Luckily, like Apple, it has a bunch of different things in there and it makes it nice to be within that system. I would say that once it is paired up, it is relatively easy to use. There's nothing too complicated about it. And I would say I would recommend it to most of my friends and family who 
not who aren't into techie stuff, I think they'd be able to figure it all out. Just keep in mind that that's once it is set up. Here's a reason why I think Sonos is very successful is because I think they know what is important to most people. Now, most people don't care about the absolute best sound quality. They want good sound quality, right? But they have features like night mode. So if you're listening at night, it kind of reduces the bass and makes the voices more, more clear and more audible. And that's important to most people, right? It has a button there to make dialogue clearer, just specifically dialogue. And that, so it raises the frequencies in that range. And so I think that that's genius. That's what people want. They want to be able to hear the TV clearly and they don't want to have to turn up their system too loud. Now, most audiophiles would probably scoff at that because they want the best, most accurate sound. But you know what? That's not what most people want. They want to be able to hear the material that they're listening to. And a lot of times that's watching TV. Now, the other thing that Sonos has is they have a subwoofer that's around $700. And so when I first saw this, I was like, no way I'm not going to get that. I love you guys, but I don't want to spend $700 on a sub when SVS has subs around 700 bucks that I know will probably annihilate pretty much everything in that price range. And so I said, you know what, I'll hold off on that. But one of my old customers actually called me up and said, hey, you know what, I have the Sono sub, you can borrow it. So thank you, you know who you are. Shout out to you for letting me borrow this. I appreciate it. So I'm gonna get into some measurements as I always do. But first, my first impressions as far as the sound, I thought that the sound was nice. It was pleasing and it was, you know, impressive for most people. Now I compared it with the Totem Kin plays, which I believe are just better overall. They're much bigger than all of these speakers, except for the sub. And it sounded that way. It sounded like it could play louder. They sounded like they had more authoritative bass. And, um, they sounded more hi-fi, let's just say. But when it came to playing movies late at night, things like that, I found that some of those features on the Sonos were very useful because I didn't want to turn it up too loud, things like that. And so even though for a hi-fi setup, if I wanted to listen to music during the day when I didn't mind bothering anybody, then I would rather have the totems. But in certain situations, I might rather have the Sonos. The thing about Sonos that most people already know is that they are focused on whole home audio, meaning that you can have speakers all over the place and play the same song to all of them at once. Or you can decide, hey, I'm over here in the office, I wanna play music in the bedroom because I'm gonna head over there. You can do that. Then if you wanna go to the kitchen, then you can move the music over there or you can play it all at the same time. And so that's something that you can do with Sonos. Just very cool. But what you really wanna know is how do these measure? How do they sound? I previously reviewed some Bose products and like Bose, Sonos doesn't publish their frequency response charts. But I'll tell you right now, I don't know why you guys don't because from what I saw, I was pretty impressed. So let's go to the computer real quick and take a look at the frequency response charts and see what we find here. All right, so we're back here in REW and I did measurements of each speaker and let's start with the Sonos Beam. And so this is a wide sound bar, not, not wide in the general sense, but just wider than a typical speaker. So I made sure to do a measurement from the center, the left and the right. And so here's the measurement from the center. I balanced it to around 83 decibels instead of 85, just because it was nighttime and it was a little bit loud. So um, 83, and you can tell there's nothing silly going on here, right? Well, uh, let's take a look at what the left side was doing and the right side. So, you know, you can see this, there's a general pattern here, which is just, you know, maybe a slight, let me take out the center for a second, maybe a slight hump around here, but that could have been my room. But um, generally not a strong V shape, nothing, nothing crazy. If I do an average of all of the different ones here, we'll get this line here. And so you can see Everything is pretty flat. It starts to roll off here around 13K, which is a lot lower, but that could be the way that I had it set up, which is that I had to use an, that HDMI adapter from my MacBook Pro to the Sonos Beam. And other thing I noticed is that it does have a pretty good extension. Now keep in mind, these are some very small drivers in this sound bar. There's multiple ones and they do have pass a passive radiator in there, but 
I remember I was doing 83 decibels was my where I was targeting. And so at a minus 3 dB, we are at 50 hertz, which is not too bad. Similar to what I was getting with the uh, Vizio soundbar that I reviewed a while back. F6 around, let's see here. F6 around 47. So it's pretty crazy. It doesn't drop off extremely fast like you'd expect, but that's some pretty good bass for a soundbar. Now let's take a look at the IKEA Symphonisk speaker. And so this is it here. And this is smoothed out, but you get an idea. This one was at 83 dB also. So not quite as flat, but again, nothing crazy going on. Now this is falling off really strong here. And I think that has something to do with the way that I was connected to it because I had to connect to it via airplay. So it could have been an airplay thing that was happening here. Generally, what I'm looking for is anything crazy going on here in the frequency response. And so this was 83 Hertz at minus three dB, which is 80. We are at 59 Hertz. Not bad for a three inch driver. Yeah, I mean, you're getting some bass from here, from the speaker, not a ton, but it's not bad. So I'm impressed. There is a slight pump in the bass here. So that might be because of the port tuning, but they did enhance the bass slightly. And um, yeah, you can see that here. I'm gonna keep the Symphonisk speaker up as well as the Sonos beam here in green. And then I'm gonna pull up the subwoofer. So let's see here. This is the subwoofer at the default volume. Um, yeah, so there it is. Let me scroll over here so you can see what's going on. This thing hits pretty deep. It gets down pretty low. But that's with a huge hump here, and that was way too bassy. Like, it just took over the whole room. I felt like in the default setting, right in the middle, it was just way too much. Like, you know, if 83 decibels was my reference point, this is up by 10 decibels. So twice as loud as, as the rest of the speakers. So I turned it down, and this is kind of what I got at the setting that I was using, which is still up a little bit. You know, it's not at 83, it's up, you know, four or five decibels, which is what most people prefer um, that I know. I ran it about four dB up. So let's just say reference point was around 87 decibels. So minus three dB would be at 84 around here, 33 Hertz. That's not bad at all. Let's see, minus six dB and we are, that's crazy you know, around 22, 23 Hertz. So yeah, this sub could get pretty low. Now it can't play as loud and with as much authority as the SVS, but I have to say I am impressed with these speakers and the way that they're tuned. So surprisingly, surprisingly, Sonos speakers measure relatively flat and the signature is more that they have an enhanced bass response. And that's good because people are impressed with bass. Most of their speakers don't have bass, especially if you're listening on TV. So Sonos does provide that. Very smart on their part. I mean, I think that they're using a lot of DSP to control this, and I'm overall impressed that it's not crazy. I thought it was gonna be a crazy V-shape, but it wasn't. The thing I noticed most is just the enhanced bass. Now the sub out of the box, that thing was turned up pretty wild if you just leave it on default. And the surround sound, they actually work as surround. So keep in mind, they're not just playing the same thing as the left and right. They're actually decoding the source material and playing left rear and right rear. So overall, I could say that I, I definitely could recommend the Sono system to somebody. It's not the cheapest way to go, but I think it's one of the coolest ways to go. It's not gonna give you the best sound, but it provides a lot of convenience and a lot of features that most people really would care about. So there you go. I know a lot of you audiophiles were expecting me to bash on Sonos and just say why it's not a good product and why people should get other things. But hey, what I found out was that they're successful for a reason and that's because they make a good product. Anyway, that's it. I hope you liked the video. If you did, make sure to like, subscribe, ring the bell to be notified when I upload new videos. And that's pretty much it. Take care, bye-bye. Oh, I forgot to mention also, I'm going to leave a sound demo, but not on this video. I'll make a separate video. So what I'll do is I'll play the Symphonisk and I'll compare those to, let's say, I think the Mica RB42s would be a good match. Those are 129 when I got them, 150 now. 
And so 150 versus 200, that'll be a good matchup. 